day on Rackler. Investigators confirmed charges of sex abuse against a staff member of the Labor Department in the Middle East. The Philippine Stock Exchange Index plunges, nearly wiping out all of this year's gains. And the Ampatuans offer settlements to the victims of the Maguindanao Massacre if they name Totumango de Datu, the mastermind. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Raptor, your social news network. Philippine Foreign Secretary Albert Del Rosario says investigators confirm certain allegations in a sex for flight case hounding embassy staff in the Middle East. In a press conference, Del Rosario says these involve a staff member of the Department of Labor and Employment in the Middle East. He adds, this was accomplished by three witnesses from Riyadh coming forward and providing us their testimonies. He says the staff members charged with sexual harassment, molestation and abuse of authority. Del Rosario says staff member has been recalled and will be investigated when he arrives in the Philippines. Last week, Del Rosario hinted, quote, internal politics could be at play in the Sex for Flight Expos. He says the person who exposed this alleged scheme is a senior Department of Foreign Affairs officer. Political party Bayan Muna says the alleged Sex for Flight scheme is, quote, just the tip of the iceberg and must be fueled by the crackdown of host countries on undocumented OFWs or overseas Filipino workers. On Monday, Bayan Muna representative Neri Colmenares says undocumented OFWs, especially in Saudi Arabia, are, quote, getting desperate, especially with the resumption of crackdown efforts on July 3. The Saudi government ordered a three-month grace period for illegal workers to clarify their status. Foreign Secretary Albert Del Rosario says the Philippine government eyes institutional changes in halfway houses for distressed overseas Filipino workers in the Middle East. This comes after Akbayan Representative Walden Bellio exposed details of an alleged sex for flight scheme by embassy staff in various posts in the Middle East. OFW rights group Bigrante says the alleged sex for flight schemes begin in the halfway houses or the Filipino workers resource centers. OFWs who ran away from abusive employers stay in FWRCs until they get repatriated. After meeting with ambassadors over the weekend, Del Rosario says the government is considering assigning one house mother per halfway house. Del Rosario also says there should be, quote, no fraternization between embassy officials, including attached agencies, directly with their wards. Government is cleaning up the oil spill that contaminated the Pasig River over the weekend. The Environment Department has suspended operations of the depot and vows to file charges. Natasha Gutierrez reports. Ang bawo talaga. Tapos nung sabi ko sa anak, mga anak ko, sige na anak, matulog na lang kayo, maya maya baka wala na yan. Parang maya maya nawawala tapos bumabalik siya. Marites Malabanan is a mother of four. She says the stench from the Pasig River roused her family from sleep. She lives in Barangay Santo Nino across the river from Lorraine Marketing, the oil depot responsible for the oil spill last June 22. Manila City Administrator Jesus Marzan says L&M is only allowed to store petroleum, not used oil. Initial findings show the spill was used oil. Tank 9, one of the depot's 10 tanks, is the source. Part of the investigation, you know, kasi ngayon pala natuyo yung ano, yung uh, naubos yung laman and then pag nag-conduct na ng water test para kasi yung water test na mag-identify kung saan talaga nanggaling. The Coast Guard says the leak stopped 3 p.m. Sunday. To prevent the oil spill from spreading, the cleanup crew uses a boom and absorbers. Two days after the spill, water in the river is an oily green. Dead fish float on the surface. The Coast Guard says it will take two to three days to finish cleanup. So far, only 200 liters of oil of the 1,000 liters spilled have been retrieved. They say it is impossible to collect 100% of the spill. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources suspends LM's operations and vows to file charges. DENR official Visminda Osorio says the depot does not have a permit to operate, not since 2005. <laughs> Sinuspend ko na today, effective today, yung kanilang operation. So the only thing that the, they will do is yung pag-clean up. Kasi hindi natin determine kung magkano ang damage 
o ano ang extent ng damage. The lawyer of LNM cries sabotage. He says someone deliberately spilled oil in the river. The depot is deep in a labor dispute. Officials promise they will get to the bottom of the leak. <laughs> but for Marites and the residents of Barangay Santo Nino, it is little comfort. They only want to be assured it will not happen again. Natasha Gutierrez, Rappler, Manila. Local shares continue to plunge Monday, erasing nearly all of their gains this year on news the United States plans to reel in its stimulus program. The Philippine Stock Exchange Index, or PSEI, falls 211.12 points, or 3.42 percent, to 5,971.05. This means the PSEI is holding on to a gain of only 1.9 percent from its 5,860.99 close on the first trading day of the year. All counter were in negative territory led by the financial index which lost 4.69 percent. Losers outnumber gainers 165 to 17 while 34 stocks were unchanged. Global markets remain turbulent after the U.S. Federal Reserve's announcement it sees growth firm enough to begin pulling back the stimulus program. This program aims to hold interest rates down and encourage investment. While the move shows the U.S. economy is strengthening, dealers fear it means there will be less cash in the financial system to invest. Regional markets fall Monday with Hong Kong's index down 1.66 percent to 19,926.26, while the Nikkei declines 0.02 percent to 13,227.02. Lawyer Harry Roque says the families of at least 14 of the victims of the Maguindanao massacre were offered settlements if they identify Maguindanao Governor Ismael Mangudadatu as the culprit behind the killings. Mangudadatu's wife and other relatives are among the 58 killed in the November 2009 massacre. Eyewitnesses named the Ampatuans who were charged for the murders. Roque, counsel for a number of the victims' families, tells Rappler Quote, a close associate of the Ampatuans promised a financial settlement. He adds, under this scheme, the victims were to sign not just a waiver and quick claim, but also an affidavit pinning the blame for the massacre in Governor Toto Mangudadatu. Roque says 14 families signed an authority to negotiate with the alleged Ampatuan associate, but he adds no settlement or waiver was signed. A Philippine Air Force OV-10 aircraft crashes off Palawan after failing to return to base from a training flight. On Sunday, the Air Force conducts a special training flight with two of its OV-10 aircraft, but only one returned. Air Force spokesman Lieutenant Colonel Miguel Ocol says, We lost contact with the pilot of the missing OV-10 since 7.35 p.m. June 23. Coast Guard spokesperson Lieutenant Granata Jude says, As of 10 a.m. Monday, they located the nose of the ill-fated plane one nautical mile off Puerto Princesa Bay. Search vessels also found floating debris of what looked like the tail section of the missing aircraft Monday afternoon. Jude adds, we can assume that the plane had crashed and landed in the waters. Authorities did not identify the two missing pilots. All air, naval and ground units of the military's Western Command and the Philippine Coast Guard are conducting search and rescue operations. Ecuador's foreign minister says U.S. whistleblower Edward Snowden asks for asylum. He is trying to escape U.S. authorities after revealing a vast phone and web surveillance program. Ecuadorian Foreign Minister Ricardo Patino announces Snowden's asylum request on his Twitter account. You see it here. On Sunday, Snowden arrives in Moscow from Hong Kong, where he first fled with documents from the National Security Agency. It's not clear exactly where he is now because he didn't board the Havana-bound flight he booked. The U.S. government says Hong Kong's decision to allow Snowden to travel is, quote, troubling because the State Department revoked his passport and ordered other countries to keep him from traveling. The WikiLeaks website says it helped organize Snowden's safe exit and confirms he is bound for Ecuador to seek asylum. Ecuador has been sheltering WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange at its London embassy for the past year. The country is led by President Rafael Correa, an outspoken leftist, populist and critic of the United States in the mold of his late mentor, Hugo Chavez of Venezuela. Last week, U.S. authorities charged Snowden with espionage. His latest interview contains new revelations about U.S. cyber espionage against Chinese targets. China's official news agency Xinhua responds to the report, branding Washington a spy villain. 
In the latest revelations in the South China Morning Post, Snowden says the NSA was hacking Chinese mobile phone companies to gather data from millions of text messages. He says U.S. spies also hacked the prestigious Tsinghua University in Beijing, home to one of six network backbones that route all of mainland China's internet traffic and the Hong Kong headquarters of PacNet, which operates one of the Asia-Pacific region's largest fiber optic networks. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number two, Malaysia's government declares a state of emergency in two southern districts choked by smoke from forest fires in Indonesia. On Sunday, the Air Pollution Index, or API, in the town of Muar hit 750, a 16-year high for the country. The other two southern towns also reached hazardous levels. In Malaysia, an API level of more than 300 is defined as, quote, hazardous. Haze is an annual problem during summer months when winds blow smoke from forest fires in Indonesia. At number five, South Africa's president announces Nelson Mandela is in critical condition. Earlier officials said Mandela was in a serious but stable condition while under intensive treatment at Pretoria's Mediclinic Heart Hospital. On Sunday, President Jacob Zuma visited Mandela and was told the hero's condition had, quote, become critical over the past 24 hours. At number eight, U.S. daredevil Nick Willenda becomes the first man to cross the Grand Canyon on a tightrope Monday. The 34-year-old who walked across Niagara Falls last year says winds were higher than expected as he crossed the Canyon Tributary Gorge some 1,500 feet above the Little Colorado River in eastern Arizona. He takes just under 23 minutes to cross 1,400 feet faster than anticipated. And at number nine, Watch out for reality TV show Apprentice Asia. Twelve contestants, successful businessmen and women, will be pitted against each other in what's being called the world's toughest job interview. At stake is a six-figure salary position under Tony Fernandez, one of Asia's most recognized entrepreneurs. The show is timely as the economic spotlight swivels towards Asia, where developing economies show robust growth levels. For the full top ten, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. Samsung launches a new set of gadgets at Earl's Court London, expanding their list of Android and Windows 8 powered devices. Josh Villanueva reports. Samsung unveils a slew of new products at its premier 2013 event at Earl's Court 2 in London. Following the success of its flagship smartphone, the Galaxy S4, Samsung expands the brand with three new smartphones, each targeted at meeting a different class of consumer. For those who want something a little less fancy, there's the S4 Mini, smaller than the S4 but with less powerful specs, and more importantly, cheaper. So as you can see, when it's underwater, the S4 Active, made for those who live an outdoors lifestyle, almost matches the original S4 spec per spec, but is water and dust resistant. The phone can be used to take underwater photos and videos. And the S4 Zoom, on one side a smartphone and on the other a digital camera that can shoot 16 megapixel images with 10 times optical zoom and a xenon flash. Photos that way also. <laughs> Photography enthusiasts will particularly love the new Galaxy NX, the world's first interchangeable lens camera that runs on Android OS. Users can pop in a data sim and use LTE or Wi-Fi to connect to social networking apps like Facebook and Instagram. The Galaxy NX comes with 30 different smart modes for beginners and an expert mode for users who don't need help figuring out settings. The camera will work with any of 13 available NX lenses, including a 45mm lens that can shoot 3D photos and videos. Samsung also announced several new Windows 8 powered devices, including the world's smallest Windows 8 tablet, the Ative Tab 3, and the Ative Q, a tablet and PC convertible that runs both Windows 8 and Android. With the press of a button, users can switch between Windows and Android. They can even pin Android apps to a Windows 8 tile and launch it with a simple tap. Uh, Android apps, this is Angry Birds. We tried Angry Birds for Android on the device and it worked without any hiccups. The Ative Q can be used in several modes including tablet mode, typing mode where it resembles a traditional notebook computer, and stand mode, reminiscent of how you'd prop your tablet up when watching videos. While this was clearly Samsung's event, Premier 2013 in London was all about Android. Two of the most important devices that we saw announced tonight, a Windows 8 convertible and a compact system camera, all came running Android OS, further underscoring the important role the mobile operating system plays in our daily lives.
Michael Josh Villanueva, Rappler, London. Rappler's social media team hosts an online conversation with the hashtag Dear Era for Manila Day. Concerned citizens write to the mayor-elect in honor of Manila Day. On Facebook, Oliver Lee says all he needs to do is one simple thing. Implement the existing laws, no compromise, just compliance. Twitter user Martina Luis says, I'd love Manila's historic places to be preserved and cleaned. We don't need another Makati or the fort. We need our history. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have affected our emotions of our readers the most. These are the top 10 stories that have gotten the most votes on their mood meter. If you take a look today, it's still a green day coming in from the weekend. Um, story that came in on Sunday, no more drug tests to get driver's license uh, from Soto. You see 43% happy, although a sizable 38% angry, 43% happy. Today's Pugad Baboy cartoon from Paul Medina Jr. being someone, 54% happy, 38% amused. The story that's gotten the most number of votes, Carlos Saldran, appointed Manila tourism consultant. Strangely, 41% sad, but 49% happy, contributing to the mood of the day. Today, most people are happy. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Monday, June 24, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.